everyone hi welcome back to my channel i'm teacher nick in this video i'm gonna teach you a topic from science form one topic number 6.1 classification of element pop quiz time Is a seashell an element or a compound? Okay, let's begin. This topic is better to start off with a little revision about matter. Matter can exist in three different states, the solid, the liquid, and the gas. Matter consists of small discrete particles which are called atoms. Size of an atom is very small. It cannot be seen by our eyes. They can only be seen by using an electron microscope and a thousand power of magnification. Now let's look a little more closer into an atom. Atom consists of three subatomic particles called the proton, the neutrons, and the electrons. The picture here shows the structure of an atom. Here you can see the position of the proton and the neutron is at the center of the atom as a nucleus, and the location of the electrons are a bit away from the nucleus, orbiting the nucleus in its orbits. The proton and the electron possesses a property called charge. The proton is positively charged and the electron is negatively charged, while the neutron has no charge. Or you can say it as neutral. This is an example of a neutral atom. This one also a neutral atom. This one also a neutral atom. And also this one a neutral atom. What do you think that makes an atom a neutral atom? I have an idea. Yes. If you could see closely to these four examples that I've shown, the number of protons in the atom is equal to the number of electrons orbiting the nucleus of the atom. And that makes an atom a neutral atom. But what if we have the number of protons is not equal to the number of electrons? For example, like this. And like this. This first one is called negatively charged atom. And the second one is called positively charged atom. But how can you tell one atom is negatively charged but the other one is positively charged atom? When we have one negatively charged particle added to another one positively charged particles, the combination makes a neutral charge. So as for the example, we have one proton pair with one electron, the charge cancel becomes neutral, and we have another proton pair with another electron, it makes them another neutral, then we left with one electron, and it makes the atom negatively charged. And for the second example, we have one electron and two protons. The one electron pair with one of the protons, it makes them neutral. And the atom left with one positive proton and it makes it a positively charged atom. So that is how you could tell one atom is positively charged or negatively charged. And this is another example of positively charged atom. 
So when the atom is either negatively charged or positively charged, we can call them ions. However, every particle has a very strong tendency to always become neutral. So the ions will combine with the other ions to become molecules. What is molecules? Molecules are neutral particles that made up from the combination of two or more atoms of the same or different elements. For example, we have two of the same oxygen element combined to form oxygen molecules. The other example is the combination of two different elements, two oxygen and one carbon to make a carbon dioxide molecules. The other example is the combination of two different elements, the two hydrogens, and one oxygen to make the H2O, the water molecules. There are many other more examples of molecules such as sulfur molecules and the other one is glucose. So up to this point, I hope you have a sufficient understanding about the atom, the molecules and the ions. <laughs> Now let's move on to elements and compounds. What is element? Element refers to the specific type of atom. Different elements contain different numbers of proton in the nucleus. For example, we have oxygen element which has eight protons, helium elements, which have two protons, and lithium element, which has three protons. On top of that, elements also refers to a substance which contains only one type of elements to build its body. For example, we have here a gold bar which contains purely only gold elements. Another example is pure lead bars, iron nails, and concentrated oxygen gas in oxygen tanks. Now let's move on to compound. In a compound, it contains two or more elements combined chemically. Compound is produced from chemical reactions. A compound can be a laboratory produce or naturally produced. For example, a plastic bag. It is a compound of laboratory produced. From the molecular structure of a plastic bag, or a polymer, you can see that it is made up from the combination of more than two elements. Another compound is table salt. Table salt is a naturally produced compound. From the molecular structure of a salt, you can see that it is made up from the combination of two elements. The next one is seashells. The seashells is a naturally produced compound. The seashell compound is made up from the combination of three elements, the calcium, the carbon, and the oxygen. Another naturally produced compound is quartz. Quartz is a type of gemstone. By looking at the molecular structure of a quartz, you can see that it is made up from the combination of two different elements, the silicon and the oxygen. Another pop quiz time! How 
How many elements are there in the following compounds? The first one, carbon dioxide. The second one, glucose. And the third one, water. In conclusion, molecules can be elements and also can be compounds. For every element, it is easier to represent them by symbols. For example, we have oxygen elements represented by the letter O, the helium element represented by the symbol HE, and the lithium element represented by the symbol LI. So now let's look a little bit closer into the symbol of elements. For example, we have carbon element and the symbol is C. To make the element symbol more meaningful, it must attach together the proton number and the relative atomic mass to the symbol. For example, here, the number 6 is referred to the proton number of the carbon. The C is the abbreviation of the word carbon. The carbon is the name of the element and 12 is the relative atomic mass of the carbon. Other than the carbon, we have a lot more other elements such as lithium, cobalt, calcium, krypton, xenon, titanium, uranium, oxygen, and many more. So with all of these elements with the symbol, the scientists came out with an idea to arrange the elements in a proper order. So then they came up with the periodic table of elements. Periodic table is a list of elements arranged in the order of increasing proton number. Elements in a periodic table are classified into groups and periods. Groups refer to the vertical columns in the table. While the period refers to the horizontal lines in the table. There are 18 groups and 7 periods in the table. Elements in a periodic table are classified into 3 classes. The metal, the non-metal, and the semi-metal. Metals elements are located on the left side of the table. 80% of the elements in the periodic table are classified as metals. All elements from group 1 until group 12 are all metals except for the hydrogen. The metallic properties of the elements decreases across both groups and periods of the table. The non-metals are located on the right side of the table. There are only 20 elements classified as non-metal the inert gases are also classified as non-metals, arranged in group 18. Semi-metals are located at the borderline between the metals and the non-metals. There are only 7 elements classified as semi-metals. Inert gases are classified as non-metals arranged in group 18. They are chemically unreactive. It means 
they do not react with any other elements to form compound. Among the properties of inert gas are they are monoatomic, colorless gases at the room temperature, low melting and boiling points, and they also insoluble in water. In the aspects of appearance, metal appears shiny, while the non-metals appears dull. For ductility, metals are ductile. while the non-metals are not ductile. In the aspects of malleability, metals are malleable, while the non-metals very brittle. Electric and heat conductivity for the metals, they can conduct electricity and also can conduct heat. The non-metals cannot conduct electricity and also cannot conduct heat. For the melting point, the metals have high melting point and the non-metals have low melting points. Copper is used to make electrical wires, heating elements and roofing. Zinc is used to make roof tiles. Gold is for jewelry. Silver is used for mirror coating. Aluminium foils for food packaging. Mercury is used in thermometer to measure the temperature and also in barometer for pressure measurements. Iodine is used to make antiseptic for medicine to protect wounds against bacteria infection. Chlorine is used to make bleaching agents. Carbon is used to make pencil legs, also to make electrodes in a dry cells. Sulfur for insecticide to make fireworks. to produce paints and also to make cleaning agents oxygen for rocket combustion that's all about classification of elements i hope you can learn something from this video if you haven't subscribed please subscribe my channel click the notification button to get all updates of my latest video yes thank you for watching